new videos every day. Hi, I'm Radia Aglis. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist and I'm going to talk to you about the series that I told you last time about. I gave you an intro and for the next 14 series, I'm going to be talking about the metabolic markers that I talked about. So if you didn't see that video, I suggest you go back and check it out so that you understand what a metabolic marker is. But I'll tell you, basically, metabolism. Eating good food, how well do you digest it, how well do you absorb it, how well do you utilize it, how well do you get rid of wastes. And I'm going to take each category and I'm going to talk about symptoms, symptoms that you may have. You can follow along if you want to go to my website, which is www.advancedhealthinstitute.com. There is the metabolic questionnaire. You can, you can follow it along and fill it out to see if you have any of these symptoms. And I'm going to be talking about them. So in category one, the first category is about the colon. This is colon health. So some of the symptoms that you may be uh, experiencing may be, first of all, feeling that the bowels don't empty completely, um, lower abdominal pain relief by um, passing stool or gas. So if you've got pain and by eliminating that's relief, then that may be a symptom in this category. Um, alternating, constipation with diarrhea, that's another symptom. Diarrhea on itself or constipation on itself. Um, hard, dry, uh, or small stool. Uh, coated tongue or fuzzy debris on the tongue. If you check that out, um, that may have something to do with the GI. Uh, passing large amounts of foul-smelling gas. Um, can we talk? <laughs> All right. Um, more than three bowel movements a day, if you're having uh, more than that. Now, some people are having less than that, and it depends. You know, lots of doctors say, oh, you know, you don't really need to have a bowel movement every day. This is not true. Basically, you do need to have um, actually one after every meal. If you think about it, your transit time is between 18 and 24 hours. So if you eat breakfast, you should be eliminating the waste product by the next day. If you eat lunch, you should be eliminating. So lots of people are really not having a good bowel function. And the better the bowel, the healthier you're going to be. But we don't want to exceed it. Also, use of lax laxatives frequently. If you find that you have to use laxatives, then you've probably got a GI issue going on, and you should take um, a further note of it. In category one, this is all about colon health. This category uh, screens for symptoms associated with gastrointestinal dysfunction. So the gastrointestinal symptoms may be due to too little hydrochloric acid. We talked about that before and what hydrochloric acid is. Remember, that's in the stomach. When the body secretes hydrochloric acid, it starts to break down proteins and a little bit of fat. So, you know, we'll talk about that in our next adventure on hydrochloric acid, but you may have too little or too little pancreatic enzymes. Remember, I talked about pancreatic enzymes being like little Pac-Man that break down large food molecules into smaller components like amino acids and lipids and glucose, or basically monosaccharides that convert to glucose. Congested gallbladder, that may be another issue that's going on, or intestinal flora insufficiency, that's your acidophilus, um, or your, uh, we talked a little bit before about acidophilus or bifidus that comes in yogurt or fermented foods or things like that. You may be insufficient in that. We have a, actually, in our intestinal tract, we have an entire community of, of uh, bacteria that we call friendly flora. That friendly flora, we actually have more friendly bacteria than we have cells in our body. We have colonies, and actually these colonies have societies, and they have their roles that they play. And so having sufficient intestinal flora is very, very important. Um, yeast overgrowth. Some of you may have heard of candida. Candida is uh, quite prevalent in the gut. It's not just for you ladies. 
We know where we have candida and yeast infections elsewhere in the vaginal tract, but actually it's really in the gut, and both men and women can have intestinal yeast overgrowth. Uh, we, we do have yeasts. We have bacteria and yeasts and friendly floras in the gut, and they're all supposed to be there, but they're not supposed to be overflowing. They shouldn't be prolific. Our immune system should be keeping them in check. And actually, those friendly flora is part of our immune uh, and first-line defense. Uh, we may have gastric or duodenal ulcers and other things that may be signs and symptoms of gastrointestinal insufficiency or these problems. So you'll know if you have some of the signs and symptoms that I mentioned uh, before in this category, then you need to check them out. Um, these symptoms are associated that are associated in this category. Um, really call for a comprehensive evaluation of the intestinal tract. That should be conducted, and sometimes we do that with a stool analysis uh, to really see what's going on in the gut. Unless the gastrointestinal tract imbalances are addressed, all therapies to support imbalances at any other level will be unsuccessful. I mean, so remember I said you are what you eat, and this is the start, basically, of life. And if, you know, remember I said it's not only eating good food, but it's how well do you digest, how well do you absorb, how well do you utilize the food, and how well do you eliminate uh, the waste. If any of these uh, in your link, in your chain, is weak, you're going to have a problem, and this leads to all kinds of other diseases. Basically, this is how metabolism works, and if we're not metabolizing well, then we're going to have problems. So one of the things that uh, if you're in this category and you have some of those symptoms you want to address, I usually use what's called the 4R program, which stands for remove, re-inoculate, replace, and repair. And this should be considered with any form of gastrointestinal dysfunction. So let's talk about it a little bit. To remove includes destroying pathogenic bacteria. Pathogenic means uh, not good bacteria. We've got our friendly bacteria, but then we've got our bad bacteria. And you've heard of E. coli. You've heard of that. That's a big scare in the media. And you've heard of uh, H. pylori, perhaps. Um, H. pylori is now, we're finding, to be the number one cause of ulcers. Uh, yeast overgrowth, we just talked about, or parasites. Now, most people don't realize that over 90% of the population has parasites of one kind or another, worms or amoebas or things like that, especially if you have pets at home. We're exposed to um, these kinds of bacteria on our hands. We're exposed in, in food uh, that we touch and things that we expose into the mouth. This is, this is just part of life. But the thing is, is that we have this immune function and all of these good things going on in the GI tract to protect us from making this prevalent. So it's really important to keep this, this colon and this GI tract healthy and make sure that these offending pathogens, is what we call them, uh, don't get out of hand because when they do, then we have these problems. Treating the condition may need drug intervention. However, one can use nutrients and herbs to address the terrain basically address the environment uh, and create an environment in which it's less favorable for the development of these bad bacteria and pathogens. Okay, the next section is to re-inoculate. This involves replenishing the gastrointestinal tract with friendly bacteria. You've heard of things like acidophilus or lactobacillus or bifidobacterium. Um, you get this not only in supplementation, but you get this in live cultured foods, such as live yogurt. Now, I want to say live, and it's very important that you realize that uh, not all yogurt is live. So I'm not talking about Dan and yogurt or Yoplait or some of these things, unless it basically some of them have been modified now where they are live. But basically, you can tell if your yogurt's live if you leave it out on the counter for four hours and it starts to bubble. If it bubbles, it's alive. If it lays there dead, chances are it's not alive. So it may be good tasting, but it's not really doing what we want it to do for good, healthy uh, re-inoculation of the gut flora. Um, other fermented foods like buttermilk and kefir 
um, and fermented foods like sauerkraut or sour pickles. These can also be used to help replenish um, that good intestinal flora. The next section, section is to replace, and this includes supporting the digestive system with pancreatic enzymes, remember those little Pac-Men, hydrochloric acid, and foods and supplements that support the biliary system. The biliary system is the gallbladder, liver gallbladder system. This is what carries toxins out of the system. So once we go through this whole metabolic process, then we have waste that need to be carried out. Some of the things that we can use to support the biliary system are beets or beet concentrate or beet juice. Um, the supplements, taurine, uh, vitamin C or hot lemon water. You may have heard of dandelion root, uh, milk thistle, uh, or we call it silymarin as well. Uh, ginger, uh, lecithin also is used to improve the production of solubility and the release of bile. And bile carries these toxins out of the system. Uh, the next category is to repair, and repair includes proper nutritional support to repair the gastrointestinal lining such as avoiding highly refined processed foods, sugar, alcohol, over-the-counter and prescription drugs and antibiotics. One thing that we have to be very, very aware of is this intestinal lining and the integrity of it. Because um, our intestinal lining, remember we talked about digestion, that's breaking it down, and then absorbing. Well, absorbing is getting it through the intestinal lining so it can get into our bloodstream. Now, there's a lot of problems with that. If you've had a long history of eating junk food and processed foods and um, taking prescription or over-the-counter drugs or lots of antibiotics, one, you strip out the, the good intestinal flora, and by doing that, and especially if you've had um, antibiotic use, um, you want to make sure that you do what's called a probiotic. And of course, a probiotic is that friendly flora we were talking about. Now, some people say, well, Radia, when I'm taking an antibiotic, do I take a probiotic during the time I'm taking the antibiotic or after? And I say both for protection. You know, one, it will um, help you not to have diarrhea or adverse effects to the antibiotic, as well as once you get off the antibiotic, make sure that you re-inoculate the gut with that intestinal flora. And I would suggest beyond, especially if you have some of the symptoms that we mentioned today, uh, beyond just taking the yogurt or the foods, I suggest that you get a probiotic, a really good one, and take that after an antibiotic use. Antibiotics, oftentimes, especially the broad spectrum antibiotics, is kind of, I call it the atom bomb theory. Um, basically, you've got some uh, bad bacteria in there. You take an antibiotic, blow up everything, and hope that your good bacteria uh, comes back before the bad does. Very often, it doesn't, and you'll see, especially young children, children that have been put on antibiotics for middle ear infections or whatever, or infants that have had that problem, very often that will lead to long-term gastrointestinal problems, and really the biggest reason is they weren't re-inoculated with a good probiotic. Um, I also recommend for repair that you do a deep tissue detox and repair program, and there's uh, many out there. Uh, if you want to know more about that, you can visit my website, advancedhealthinstitute.com, and we'll talk about that, um, including the use of supplements designed to stimulate the growth and repair and function of the intestinal mucosa, as well as aid in gut detoxification. At times, you also may want to use a fiber support as a bulking agent to improve bowel movements. Remember, we talked about the more, the better the elimination, the more um, the stool is well formed in good color. It should be basically brown. It shouldn't be yellow or, you know, uh, white. If it's white or gray, that, that is an indication that there's something going on with the liver. So be careful of that. So good colon health, this is the first frontline defense for all other things going on. If you haven't got good colon health, then pretty much the rest of it, you're going to end up being 
unhealthy. So make sure that uh, if you've got any of these symptoms, that you do something about it. Again, if you want to know more uh, information on this, visit my website, advancedhealthinstitute.com. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Psyche Truth. Again, um, I am going to be doing uh, these metabolic series, uh, there's 14 metabolic markers. Today it was colon health. We're going to move on to some of these details and make sure that you go to that website and pull up that questionnaire and then you can follow along and see if you've got any of these symptoms. Well, thanks for joining me and I hope you've learned a lot and make sure that you stay tuned for next time and we'll be talking about the other categories. Thanks for coming. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.